and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to thee, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. So we have a comparison of how to get called and how not to get called. Uh, when Jesus calls Peter and Andrew, and when he calls John and James, they immediately turn and follow him. There's not like even any time for thinking. Do you notice that? Immediately, they just go. But on the other hand, we have Jonah. And we didn't get the whole story of Jonah, but I'm going to give you some highlights of it. Because Jonah was one of the favorite stories of the early church. In fact, way hundreds of years before they started painting crosses or drawing crosses on the walls of their worship spaces, they had Jonah and the whale. Jonah and the whale is a symbol for Christianity for many reasons. One of them is that the Greek word ichthus, which means fish, if you take each letter of ichthus, it's, it's the first letter of Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. So Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior are the first are the letters of the word ichthus. So it just naturally became a symbol for Christians. And because it was a giant fish that swallowed Jonah, and some of the numbers of days in the Jonah story match what happened with Jesus, and because Jonah was dead to all purposes, he was thrown over the deck of his boat and was dead for three days until this fish came up out of the water and spit him out. The Hebrew says he vomited him out. So Hebrew is a little bit more graphic. So Jonah gets thrown up onto the beach. And we saw as Christians that this is a type of baptism. Now, it doesn't sound like your baptism, does it? Most of us got baptized as infants, and we got the little water dipped on us. But those of us that were baptized as adults, we're supposed to picture the entire body going under the water and dying to ourself, our old selves, and then we rise up again after being dead into new life with a new name and a new calling and a new persona. And this persona is one that is responsive to God. That when God says, Magdalene, Magdalene says, what? I'm here, here I am, Lord, what do you want me to do? And we are to be as quick as the fishermen were in responding to the call. Now, because it's been 2,000 years, and because our liturgy has gotten us used to being Christians, it's not dangerous to come to church, and we're used to sitting in our pews. And often we hear the story of the fishermen following Jesus as, yeah, we know that. Does it excite you to hear about Peter and Andrew and James and John following Jesus? I don't know. We know that. But it was meant to wake you up that we're supposed to hear the gospel in the present tense, that Jesus is calling us right now, right here, through the words of our living scripture, that scripture itself is an encounter with the living Christ, so that we are slapped upside the head with a dish towel, as they used to tell me in the South, just slap them upside the head with a dish towel. <laughs> That'll wake them up. We're to be slapped upside the head and waking up and saying, oh yeah, Jesus is calling me today to live as if this is the only day I have on earth. So that reading from Corinthians is not to disregard that you have a marriage to your beautiful wife or husband. It's to say, you could die today. And if you were in knowledge that you're going to die today, how are you going to follow your Lord? Do you know that you're following your Lord? Can you pray? Am I following you, Lord? That's a good thing to pray. Am I following you, Lord? How would you like me to act? What should I do? Those are three good prayers. So you can see now with this little tune-up of the gospel, if we go back to Jonah and see how Jonah replied to being called, why this was a favorite story of the early Christians. Because when Jonah is called, Jonah what? <laughs> Go to Nineveh, which is a huge city, and tell them they have 40 days to repent or I'm destroying all of Nineveh. And what does Jonah do? He goes the opposite direction. He goes and pays all his money to get
get on a boat that is sailing in the opposite direction to Tarshish. Off he goes to Tarshish. As soon as they break anchor and start sailing away, God sends this turbulent wind and the boats rock back and forth. And Jonah goes to the very bottom of the boat and hides because he knows he's in trouble. <laughs> he knows the wind is from God and he knows the storm is because of him. But the other sailors aren't Hebrews and they don't know what this Hebrew is doing downstairs when they're all perishing upstairs. So they go down and get him and they say, is your God angry at us? What's going on? Tell us why you're on this boat. And he says, I'm running from God because he wants me to go tell Nineveh that he's going to destroy them. Who would want to do that? And they said, well, then make things right with your God because we are all going to perish. And he says, I repent, but they are still tormented by the waves. So they pick him up and they hurl him overboard. And down he goes. And he's dead to them. But that's when God sends a fish, a large fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah is in the belly of this fish for three days. So we have here, when Jonah is in the belly of the fish for three days, there's a metaphor for Jesus in the tomb for three days. We have in Joseph, Jonah going overboard a baptism. He is baptized into death, he thinks he's dead, until he rises in three days to be spat out on the beach, and when he comes out, he is converted, and he's doing what God wants quickly. He doesn't even have to be asked a second time, but God does ask him, would you please go to Nineveh and tell them I'm going to destroy them in 40 days? So he goes to Nineveh. He shouts out that, he's, that God's going to destroy this huge city in 40 days, and they pay attention. They are converted. So they hear God's call, and they turn. They put on sackcloth, not only on themselves, but on all their animals. So it's kind of a comedy scene. If you can picture a city with everybody wearing rags and throwing ashes on themselves and their animals too. And they repented for 40 days and 40 nights. What does that remind you of in our Christian story? Lent. Jesus going out into the desert and fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Is this story just made for Christians or what? And then after 40 days have passed, does, G does God destroy Nineveh? No, his heart is turned. So God changes his mind. They are saved just as we are saved through Jesus Christ. Both of these examples of scripture are supposed to be applied in the present tense. That we see Jonah among us today running the opposite direction when God calls. And we are to learn from these scriptures that they stand up and walk among us, teaching us to be responsive and to wake up and to ask God, am I indeed following you? And if not, what do I need to do? And at the end of the day, to say, did I follow you? Well, I know I blew it here and there, so please forgive me. To make an inventory at night, to make a confession of faith and loyalty in the morning, that we are going to live as if we have one day, because that's what our Christian heritage teaches us to do. It's a practice. It'll get easier. Amen.